everyone. I'm Annalisa S. Abastar, one of the reporters of Supervision and Leadership, Building Self-Directed Things. My topic is about roles and responsibilities of self-directed teams. Please allow me to take 10 minutes of your time. Thank you. The first role and responsibility is focus on improving the team's self-directed learning skills. In this part, the self-directed teams provide clear roles and responsibilities in mind. Improving learning skills of the team helps to develop new techniques to keep up with the fast-changing world. Number two is widen your critical thinking skills. Critical thinking is a key skill in the workplace. It helps the team to solve problems and build strategies that make them better at their jobs. The third one is time and resource management. In this part, we need to manage time and resources well. It helps to increase transparency, reduce burnout, ensure there is enough resources available, and maximize efficiency. It also helps the team to work faster and more efficiently. The team can focus on more important tasks and avoid distractions. The fourth one is to set clear process. We need to manage the process in teamwork. Most workplace problems create stress because of a lack of certainty of what to do next. Having a process in place takes away that uncertainty. Remember, self-directed teams with clear roles and clear process will perform better. Number five is build suitable work environment. In this role, construct a work environment with the appropriate physical layout of the required facilities. Taking care of the workplace environment improves productivity, helps retain talent, and most of all, it is good for the team's overall mental health. Number six is to involve the team in the key organizational strategies. In this role, being involved in an organizational strategies, the self-directed team establishing the priorities and setting the direction of the team goals. It defines the view of success and prioritizes the types of activities that will make that goals a reality. Number seven is to get a senior leader with mental and emotional commitment to the team. A team needs not just a committed leader that guides them to achieve certain goals and objectives, but also a leader with a heart. Number eight is to establish shared vision. Successful leaders know the importance of creating a strong shared vision of their teams. And when confidently communicated to the team, an inspiring vision provides energy to accomplish big things. Number nine is to set up a sound training and feedback system. Feedback that is constructive is vital to teams' ongoing development. Feedback clarifies expectations, helps teams to learn from their mistakes, and build confidence. Constructive feedback is one of the best things leaders can provide to their members. And number 10 is to provide a supportive culture. Having a strong supportive culture aligns the core values beliefs, and mission firmly and can keep members engaged. Teams who are happy, feel respected, and valued are less likely to quit. Now, let's see how we can motivate members towards working in such a team. Number one is empowering employees. We can motivate employees by empowering them. Give them more authority in order to have their problems solved and manage project faster. Empowered employees or members are guided to better development of each member's potential. They are loyal and motivated on performing any jobs, the feelings of being needed, and to do the job without any doubts. 
Number two is developing self-motivation and conflict management skills. In this part, the ability to motivate yourself or self-motivation and managing conflict well are important skills. Self-motivation drives people to keep going even in the face of setbacks, to take up opportunities, and to show commitment to what they want to achieve. Therefore, employees with strong commitment resolution skills are able to effectively handle workplace issues. Individuals who handle conflict in a respectful and optimistic way create the chance to grow and learning. Number three is the proper alignment of individuals' interests. Through proper alignment of individuals' interests, the members see greatest clarity of their expectations and responsibilities and are highly motivated to achieve their goals. This helps improve members' engagement and leads to happier company culture. Example, group your members according to their interests so that they can perform well. Number four is to have clear objectives in mind. Clear goals and objectives allow members of the team to monitor their own progress all year round and correct their effort as necessary. Example, if members know what they need to accomplish, they can look at their results as they go and identify barriers to achieving goals. Number five is to ensure the right mix of strengths within a team. As a leader of a team, you need to do more, direct and delegate works. Truly effective leaders can recognize the unique strength of team members and optimize all those natural gifts. Building on the strength of group members is much more effective in raising performance than trying to to improve weaknesses. Leader can empower members to discover and develop their strength before placing them in roles where they can excel. There are five C's for self-directed teams. Number one is clear communication. Communication in teams is more important than just efficient work. It allows everyone on the team to be educated on any topic that may affect their work. It also develops trust, builds camaraderie among the members, and boosts morale and helps members to stay engaged in the workplace. Number two is creative thinking. With the ability to think creatively and outside the box, Employees are more likely to come up with unique and innovative solutions to obstacles they encounter. Number three is cooperation. Cooperation and teamwork facilitate communication by fostering an atmosphere of mutual support in which each member of the team feels supported by the other members. It increases the feeling of solidarity. Number four is convincing leadership. Every good leader needs to be able to influence and inspire their team. A leader must successfully motivate and inspire their team to work together and implement new idea or achieve a common goal. Number five is constructive conflict management. When leaders know how to manage constructive conflict, it transforms into healthy and intellectual debate on how to make things better. It provides teams a space to be honest and to speak about what they think regarding a specific goal. It helps teams learn how to resolve issues in ways that encourage, compromise, and creativity. And the conclusion for this lecture... In self-directed teams, everyone knows their responsibilities and commitments. Thus, members and team satisfaction are high in self-directed teams. For our food for thought for tonight, it says that alone we can do so little. Together, we can do so much by Helen Keller. 
Uh, it says that when we work together on a common goal, we can achieve things beyond our greatest imagination. Doing things all by yourself will take a long time to finish a particular activity while doing things with a group can help the activity finish in a short amount of time. And that ends my report. Thank you for listening.